Hi everyone, I'm back! Uh, my last video got interrupted, I'm really sorry about that. Um, that was a couple of days ago. Today's the 8th of January, that was the 6th of January. So, I'm back for part two. I got interrupted by my partner rang me on the phone and then my phone ran out of space so I was trying to get the movie off and then my partner came home and I then I couldn't possibly film in front of him because I'm much too self-conscious. Um, even though he's probably watching it on YouTube. I'm pretty sure he's watching it. Tim. Um, so I'll just pick up where I left off, which was I was talking about the things I want to finish this year because I have 27 whips and I want to finish 10 things so I can get them off the whip list um, and shorten the whip list a bit. Uh, so I'll just pick up and carry on talking about the last two things I want to finish and then a few things I want to work on and so on. So, um, the, the next thing I want to finish is this, oh, I actually have a finish in this, in this, in this bag. The one I want to finish is a silk gauze sampler and I have a previous silk gauze finish right here. If you can see that, it's very tiny. Um, I, you know what, this is bad because I can't remember what it's called or who the chart is by. I finished it in 2006. 11 years ago um, and as you can see it's really crooked I did do it in tent stitch yeah yeah it's definitely tent stitch not half cross stitch and that's why it's sort of warped um, yeah I'll have to find out who this is by and put a caption up so you know because I don't know what it's called or who it's by and it's very cute isn't it um, yeah 40 count silk gauze this was done in DMC threads but the one I want to finish this year is this one and it's called it's by the hearts content and it's called gaze a while and this one is also on 40 count silk gauze and this one is a little it's um done with uh overa soir silk these silks they're gorgeous um and i started this oh, 2008 or 9 maybe when i was in the hospital i remember um, and I didn't do much, as you can see, just the little house in the corner. Oh, only the top story of the house. Um, this is also on 40 count silk gauze in Overa Soir silks. I have, see these things, I, they don't take that long to do really. It's just a very small piece. Um, and it'll be fun. And I can't wait to do it. And I think that's all I have to say about that. It's, it'll be very cute when it's done too. Gaze a while. I love the... Gaze at the tree, gaze at the owl, gaze at the stars, especially the stars. It's really sweet. I like it. I can't wait to finish it. Good. What else is in here? Oh, I have another thing in here. Oh, I have two more things in here. Oh my gosh, this has started. I have another whip in here. I used to do a lot of these little um, permanent Copenhagen kits. These tiny little ones like this. don't know how well you can see that. Um, and it's obviously on really tiny Ada, like 18 or 20. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, I have started it. Well, I've got basically nothing done. So now I have 28 whips. Awesome. Fantastic. There's another whip to do. Look how rusty that needle is. It's really, the fabric's ruined. Not ruined, but I'll have to cut that bit off before I frame it. Okay, awesome. I just discovered another whip. And this one is not started. No, this one isn't started. There's another cute one. I used to collect these, um, but they got quite expensive. They were about, yeah, this is $10.90. They sort of went up to about $15 each for these teeny weeny little pieces. But they look so sweet. I finished a few of them. Um, I really like them. So now I have 28 whips. I have to remember to write that one up. And these have no name, these ones. So I just have to say, Permit of Copenhagen small kit. All right, awesome. Well, I might finish that other small one there too, as well. <laughs> That'll give me another finish for the year. I need to knock some whips off my list, because 27 is not acceptable. I'd like to have it down around, I guess 12. Yeah, I guess 12 would be acceptable. The problem is that five of them are full coverage pieces. I'd be much more comfortable around five or six, but the full coverage pieces, I mean, they're never gonna get done. <laughs> not never, not never, but it's gonna take five years for me to finish even one of them so I'm just going to have to look at that okay 
so the next thing I want to finish this year is actually almost finished. It is a round robin that I started in... Oh, oh I have another finish in here too. <laughs> I haven't been through this stuff for a long time. Um, this is a round robin that I did in 2007, I believe. Um, and it's actually a Heaven and Earth Designs round robin. And we each decided to... We sent our fabric around with different slots for each person to fill in. I think it's like 60 by 80 stitches or 40 by 60 or something. I'm not going to count. Um, so we, everyone did heaven and earth designs. Some people took a big chart and broke it up into small, a small section of the chart for each person to stitch. Um, I just said, my theme is going to be black and white. Just choose a black and white chart and stitch a part of it, which everybody did. So I've got, I'll show you them all. This is motherhood, which was stitched by Michelle. I'm no longer in contact with any of these people, which is a shame. Um, that's the one I did. That's the Madness of Hatred. Um, they're both Selena Fennec. This is Love's Magic Spell, which was stitched by Terry. And I can't remember the artist of that one. I'm sorry. Um, Gathering Dew by Crystal Camprubi, I think. Uh, that was Wanda. Um, Lee did Love Me Not, which was also Selena Fennec. Then there's another Empty Space which I will be filling in and I'll also be finishing off the border and then I can call this finished. Um, then we have Strange Kind of Blue by Sherry. Um, that's a Selena Fennec. And the last one is also Selena Fennec and it's Scotland. Um, and that was stitched by Nikki, darling Nikki. Nikki was a good friend. Well, I don't know, good friend. It's hard to say good friend when you never spoke in person. You only spoke through comments on your blogs. Um, but yeah, I've, I'm surprised I haven't seen Nikki around on Stitch Mania or Floss Tube or anything. Nikki! Nikki and I did um, Takata 2 together by The Drawn Thread. We did a stitch along. We called it Takata Tuesday because every Tuesday we would do two motifs on Takata 2 and we did it together and it was really fun. I love stitch alongs like that and I love, oh, I would love to do another round robin. It doesn't have to be heaven and earth. I'd love to do any kind of round robin. Does anyone know of any groups that do that? Because I want to do more. It was really fun. Like, I'd stitch my part, then I'd send it on to the next person, and then they'd stitch their part and send it to the next person until it came back to me. And in the meantime, I'd get the last person's one sent to me, and I'd stitch on theirs, and so on. It was great fun. I loved Around Robin. It was really nice talking to people and hearing how they'd done on their stitching, and you get to know them, and it's great fun. So I have a finish in here. This is my first and only Heaven and Earth Designs finish, and it's a quick stitch called Scent of Enchantment, Enchantment, and it's by Amoreno, um, and it's like, it's tiny, I think it's like 60 by 100 stitches, it's very small, but even though it's so small, the detail's really pretty, and this took me like a week and a half to stitch, because um, I just stitched on it solidly till it was done, and I loved it, and it does look so pretty. Anyway, there you go. So if I finish off that round robin, that'll be another finish for the year. I feel like I've um, overburdened myself a bit with finishes. Uh, I might be being too ambitious, but that's all right. It's good to be ambitious. It's good to be ambitious. Maybe I'll make it easily. Maybe I won't. So there's three more things here that I want to show you. And they're things that, of course, I'd like to finish them, but I think I will definitely be overburdening, uh, overburdening myself if I say these are going to be finishes. Um, so I'm just going to say I'm going to work on these and get some progress in on them. Um, and I might finish them. <laughs> the first one is one that was, when I was counting my whips, there were a few of them that I had previously classified in my head as UFOs. And they included the Schwalm one, the Schwalm white work, and the, um, the pin keep the cruel embroidery pin keep because I thought I was just doing them to practice some stitching techniques and I wasn't in love with the finished pieces so I didn't need to actually finish them um, and this one I had decided was going to be a UFO because I no longer really love the design I did love it when I started it um, I know what you're all going to think when I show you you're all going to think oh my god it's on black fabric that's why it's a UFO uh, but I really didn't have any problems with black fabric. This is called Fire and Ice, and it's from Custom Crafts, and the artwork is by Charlene Linscog Osorio. What a name. I love names like that. 
Um, yeah, so I only got about a third of the way through this and I'll show you what I've done. I'll put this behind, hopefully. Oh, well, I hope you can see that. So I've done about a third, the top third of the horse's head. And there's a little, fair bit more to go. Um, but when I pulled this out, when I was counting my whips, I looked at it and I actually didn't hate it so much. It's on 32 count black linen. And the black really wasn't a problem. People complain about black. That wasn't the problem. Um, it just, I just don't love the design anymore. Um, and when I stitch it, I'm definitely not going to hang it up or any, not that I hang anything up. Everything I finish goes in a drawer. Um, but I think I could finish this and give this to a friend who I used to stitch with, Tara, my friend. She loves horses. And she would actually love this when it was finished, I think. And as I was looking at it, I thought, you know, if I implemented parking on this now, I'd probably finish it quite easily. So what I'm going to do with this is get it out, do some work on it, and decide if I want to finish it or not. I'll, you know, I might finish off this part of this page. His like, the front of his mane there. I'll finish off this part, I'll see how much I hate it. If I hate it, it's a UFO, and I won't feel bad about it. But I think it's achievable to, um, I think I can actually work on it without killing myself. So I'm going to give it a try. I might try and retrieve it, and I might try and finish it. Because it shouldn't take too long. If I get on with it, I could finish it in two weeks, I think. So we'll see. We'll see. It's a maybe. Um, okay. This is another one that I want to work on. This is something I bought for my mum's 50th birthday. Oh, where is it? And I was going to stitch it all up for her um, by her 51st birthday and have it done. And now she is, she's turning 57 in a couple of months, so naughty me, I'm not very good. Um, it's really nice. I bought it with the box. It came with the box and a little scrimshaw ruler and some things to finish it off with. And it's called The Sewing Chest of Nantucket Sister Sailor Sarah Elliott by Primitive Traditions. And there's the box top, the little needle book, a biscornu, a scissor fob, a roll up thing. I don't know what it is. All these pieces. I don't know which pieces I'm going to do for her. Probably definitely the box top and the scissor fob and the needle, bo uh, needle book or scissor case or whatever it is. So I have that. I have all the fabric pieces cut to size and so on. The reason I couldn't stitch on this is because I had a problem with the colors. So if you see, I started off with this little crook jaw um, scissor case here. And you can see there's like light blue checks and dark blue checks. And then the, um, the whale is like a dark, dark gray sort of color. But the colors I have just don't work. Um, these are the colors that the, f that the chart called for, but they don't work. I'm going to have to unpick and choose something else. So as you can see here, it's not very readable. The light blue and the dark blue, one of them looked kind of gray, not blue at all. And the, sorry, brownie gray. And the whale looks kind of brownie as well. So there's no contrast between the whale and the writing. So you can't read the writing. Uh, so I'm going to, I don't know, I'm going to unpick it find some better colors, something with more contrast between the light and dark blue, and just fix it because I don't like it. So that's been sitting there waiting for me to do something about it for a long time, seven years or so. <laughs> um, but I'm very keen to get some more done on it because it's for my mom, and I still think it's really pretty. And the box is sitting there at her house waiting for a top, so I should do it. And it'll be very nice when it's done. And it, and it also takes some finishing, which I don't like, to FFO it. But we'll make it happen. I've actually finished a few things before. I finished a scissor fob. Oh, a couple of scissor fobs and a couple of scissor cases and things. So I know how to do it. I just don't enjoy doing it. Okay, let me just put this away. Okay, and the last thing I'm going to show you that I want to get work done on this here is my favorite whip I have. Oh, sorry about the bags and stuff. This is my number one favorite whip, and this is all done in needlepoint ink, needlepoint ink silks. And it's being done over two on 40 count linen. I don't know what color, sort of cream, I guess. And it is so pretty. It's called the Celtic Sampler by the Needles Praise, and this is part one of two. This is Wallace, and then there's part two called Robertson. 
which goes next to it. Don't know how well you can see that. I will edit in a picture if there's too much glare on this image. Wallace and Robertson, and, that, and I've got enough fabric here to stitch them side by side. Um, but currently I'm still on Wallace, part one. And I love this because it's all done in specialty stitches in needlepoint ink silks. And it's so sweet, it's really pretty. The colours are lovely. I've only done two and a half um, sections so far. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 sections. 14, okay. So if I made myself do two sections a month, I think that's achievable and then I could finish it this year. We'll think about it. So anyway, I'll tell you about these ones I've done so far. Um, I might have to actually take the camera down. Yeah, I'll take the camera down and show you a bit closer up. So the first section of this sampler that I did, well, the first thing I actually did was all the outlining. Um, that's done in double back stitch. You can look up stitch diagrams of these online. Double back stitch um, for all the outlining of all the parts. The part I did first um, was done in tent stitch. Um, all these little acorns, leaves, and the flowers are tent stitch. And then the background part is actually a pulled four sided stitch. Um, and then the white bits that are left will be filled in with some gold work, which I'll do at the end after I've washed it. Uh, the next part I did was this bit, which is part 11. The first bit was part one. This is part 11. I did it because it was small and cute. Um, there's some chain stitch braiding. The white, red, and blue is just chain stitch. Um, and in between the chain stitch, these little golden things are queen stitches. And I won't be able to zoom in too much here to give you too much detail. And there's a terrible shadow on it. Nope. Um, they're queen stitches. And then in the background is just some more little tent stitches. And then over here to this part three, this is entirely queen stitches, which I dislike. I dislike doing queen stitches very much. Um, you can find a stitch diagram for queen stitches online. Um, I might do a demonstration one day of a queen stitch. Uh, they look very sweet, but I really hate doing them. There's a lot of work in them. Um, so that's what I've done so far on this piece. I'd like, I'd love to finish this this year, but I think that's being a bit ambitious to hope for it. But it is my favorite whip and I want to finish it. So there you go. That's the Celtic sampler, part one, Wallace. Um, I will work on that this year, definitely, because it's my favorite whip. And I, I actually want to work on it right now. When I look at it, it just excites me. It's so pretty. Um, so there's that one, I'll leave that there. And those are the, th that's all three? Yeah, that's all three things that I'll work on this year, but not necessarily finish. Um, and that is kind of all I have to show you. I think that's my plans for the year. So I think that was 10 finishes, or maybe 11 with that extra little one I found. Um, and a few things I'll work on. So as for starts, I will be limiting my starts, hopefully. I'm not going to give myself any hard and fast limits. I already know at least two things I'll start. I think when I finish off the Firefly Fairies by Lavender and Lace, I'll sort of have a slot open. Um, like, I kind of have slots. Like, I want to have a full coverage on the go. I want to have a Lavender and Lace slash Mirabilia slash Teresa Wensler on the go. I want to have a, a monochrome or Quaker sort of sampler on the go. Um, like that. Um, but of course all the slots are overfilled at the moment. So when I finish Lavender and Lace, I'll have an opening for which I will fill with a Mirabilia because I've never done a Mirabilia and I want to. I've been looking at all the charts online and I'm planning a big order from 123 Stitch. I'm going to kit up a few things and get ready to start them. So I will be ordering a, a Mirabilia. The ones on the shortlist at the moment are at the Met. I'll put pictures up. At the Met, um, Lady Hera, The Garden Party, Tree of Hope, and The Kiss. And I think at the moment that at the top of the list are Tree of Hope and The Kiss. 
The Kiss is out of print now, I think, but I've had it in my stash for years. So I have to buy a few more. Um, I'll probably be buying about 10 Mirabilias, um, but I'm going to kit one up ready to do when I finish Firefly Fairies and probably when I finish another one of the 10 that I've done. And that'll be my reward for actually getting some finishes done this year. <laughs> um, another one I'm de probably almost definitely going to start this year is called Siren Jady by The Sampler Cove. And it is, I'm putting a picture in right here. Um, it is a Thai themed sampler with some Thai motifs and it's done on black and the colors are very nice. Um, and I'm pretty sure I'll start that this year. After my trip, I've been wanting to stitch something representing all the places I went. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do for Singapore. Um, but I've got that one, Siren Jady for Thailand. And I've been looking for something for Cambodia and Vietnam. Because I really love Cambodia and Malaysia. I really love Cambodia and, Viet Cambodia and Vietnam though. And I want to find maybe a picture of the Vietnamese women in their, in their dresses with their non-lars or like a countryside scene of the rice farming and I don't know it's it's not easy to find cross stitches like this because you can't just google Vietnamese cross stitch because nothing comes up trust me I've looked uh, um and for Cambodia I'd love to find um like a I've been looking you can find a few pictures of Angkor Wat which is where we went the temple in the middle of Cambodia um you can find cross stitches of Angkor Wat but they're these full coverage monstrosities they're like the printed ones that come from China they're not very pretty um, so I don't really like any of those um, I would love to find one that is a cross stitch of the Apsara dancer which this is the woman who is plastered all over the temple she's on every single spare wall as you walk up to the temple of Angkor Wat and a lot of the other temples too and she was the, the dancer of the gods and to look upon her is to bring you great luck um, but I just really liked her and it was a, it's really symbolic of my memories of seeing Angkor Wat. So I'd love to find an Apsara cross stitch to stitch, um, but I have not had any luck yet. What I might have to do is find a picture and convert it into a cross stitch. Maybe just a, a monochrome one colour silhouette style cross stitch, but I should be able to do that. I will work on it. I'll think about it at least. <laughs> if anyone knows of any... Malaysian, Cambodian or Vietnamese or Singaporean cross stitches please let me know in the comments because that's one of my goals for this year is to stitch something to represent each place I went. Um, and then other starts for the year. I might start the RETM Alice Quaker piece. Um, there's a picture here. I really like that. It looks very cute and I've seen a few people on Instagram stitching it at the moment and it's so sweet and it looks like it would be quite small and not wouldn't take too long to finish so I'd like to do that because I'm crazy on Alice in Wonderland and I love Quaker and it's gonna be so cute um, and I will very very likely be starting um, Save the Stitches by the Blackwork Journey this year because I love black work I always have and I've never actually done a black work piece I've done small bits of black work on other pieces but that is gorgeous I've seen so many whips and finishes in the last few months since I've been looking at cross stitch again and I'm pretty excited about that so I will probably be starting that this year um, and I'm going to try not to start too many other things I'm going to make a big order from one two three stitch and I'll be buying quite a few charts I think Probably, oh gosh, there's so many things I want to stitch, but I'm going to limit, limit myself a little bit because the point of this year is to, to reduce the whips. Um, so I've written down that there are two things that I will absolutely not start this year. I'm not going to let myself do it. And that is I will not start another heaven and earth design or full coverage piece. There are, I have so many, I have like 50, 60 charts. And there are some quick stitches that I'm in love with and I keep thinking, you know what, I could do that in a year easy, let's start it. But I'm not going to do it. And I will not start Death by Cross Stitch. I have it. I've got ideas for the colours I'm going to use. I'm ready in my mind to start. Luckily I don't have the fabrics and thread, so I'm not going to buy the fabrics and thread and I'm not going to start it. I will not start it. If I start Death by Cross Stitch or another Heaven and Earth design, I will chop off my left hand. If I don't finish Firefly Fairies, there goes my right hand. I'm telling you, please hold me accountable. <sighs> okay. Yeah, 
This year is about reducing my whips a bit. I don't feel too bad about my whips, but I'd like to have them, you know, under 20. Let's let's tr aim for under 20 this year. Okay. Because I've been I was reading about the year of whips and I've heard people talking about it on Floss Tube. But unfortunately, I just I missed the cutoff date. I didn't hear about it until after it had started. So I'm kind of doing my own year of whips. Let's say that. Um, I also heard about um, Stitch from Stash. Um, where you guys, you know, the people who are doing it won't be spending any money or they've got a small budget for each month. Um, and they'll just stitch from what they have already kitted up. Um, and I could do that. I've got enough to do that, but... I'm not going to because I've just had a break from stitching for seven or eight years and I've hardly bought anything and now I'm back and my wish list is absolutely bursting at the seams there are so many things I've seen that have come out in the last seven or eight years that I need I just need them so this year I'm gonna spend money and I'm not gonna feel bad about it maybe what I'll do is like write down how much I spend on everything but not add it up till the end of the year and that will motivate me to actually save money next year that's probably a good idea. But I'm spending money this year and I'm not going to feel bad about it. Um, yeah, there's a... The Canberra cross-stitching group is having a get-together on the 14th to do like a, st a stash exchange thing where you bring the things you don't want from your stash anymore and sell them to each other. But I was looking through my stash and there's nothing I don't want. Like, there are definitely things that I no longer like that I bought when I was a kid. Um, I know I'm never going to stitch them. But I can't give them what can't give them away <laughs> I just like having my stash like I might not like it now but maybe a friend or one day I'll have a daughter who likes it and wants to stitch it I just don't want to give them away <laughs> or sell them even I just I maybe I'm a stash hoarder maybe that's the thing that's very possible I might be a stash hoarder but <laughs> you know I don't feel bad about it though I don't hoard anything else all my books a digital they're all on Kindle or audiobook all my DVDs are, I use all the streaming services now I don't have any stuff like that I'm not a clothes shoes and purses person I don't hoard anything except for cross stitching and I don't feel bad about it so that's that and my stash will be growing because I'll be ordering a lot more from 123 stitch soon yeah I'm gonna spend some money on 123 stitch I think kit up Siren JD and my Mirabilia and buy a lot of charts and not feel bad about so that's all I've got for now I think it's all I have to show you I will probably do another progress video probably around the end of January because it's already almost the 10th yeah around the end of January and I'll show you what I've done which probably won't be much not as much as I should um, <laughs> that's always the way for me um, I'm going back to work tomorrow that's the only time I'm using the W word we're not allowed to use the W word here. Um, Tim said the W word yesterday and he nearly got smacked. <laughs> um, so the stitching time will be reduced as of tomorrow, unfortunately. Um, I've got, I want to do a video of my whips, like not actually sh hold them up and show you, but just show you a picture of what it will look like when it's done and what, it, and my current progress. Um, and that's kind of to, as a record for myself and to hold me a little bit accountable um, so I may work on that this month um, it won't be like me talking over it it'll just be music or something I may work on that this month I'm not sure um, and I've also found like all these stitching tags that people do where you answer questions about your stitching I've seen people doing them on floss tube um, vintage chic stitcher did a really good one called confessions of a cross stitcher and I'm I really want to do that so I might maybe in my next video if I don't have too many things to show you because this video even though it's in two parts I've showed you a lot of things um, and it's gone really long I know that so I should probably cut it off anyway have a great stitchy month guys enjoy your January and all your January celebrations um, in Australia we've got Australia Day coming up so that's going to be great fun. Um, and I will see you all at the end of the month, or maybe early February. And bye!